Are you a code minimalist? Oh, you don't know? Well, exhibit A, some code. If you are a code minimalist, it should be second nature for you to spot the issues with this code. If not, let's go through it together. First of all, who does this guy think he is implementing his own search algorithm? Any standard library will contain tried and true search algorithms that will smoke whatever we're able to come up with regardless of how genius and elegant we think our algorithm is. So we can reduce code surface area and replace this with something from the standard library. But wait, we can reduce the size of the code even more. We can remove some dead code here. This isn't even being used. We can also remove some redundant code here. There's no need to return zero if the passed in value is zero because the result will be zero in that case anyway. Lastly, we can remove some code duplication here. With less surface area, there are fewer opportunities to introduce bugs as well as less fluff to contribute to cognitive load. Not to mention, if you write tests, which you should by the way, this reduces the test coverage area which means you need to write less tests for good coverage. So that's the first law, reduce the size of your code. Let's imagine we're writing out some logic that should be encapsulated within a specific package. We decide that putting a comment above the method informing people that it should only be used locally is sufficient because people are smart, right? But then that boy Joe Schmo comes along, and let me just say, that brother doesn't read comments. A week or two down the line, we start to see the usage of this method pop up throughout the code base, increasing the exposed surface area. One day, the original developer decides to adjust the method's interface, not knowing that Joe Schmo has basically spread this method throughout the code base like the plague. To the original developer's surprise, his update to the method's interface has broken various parts of the code base. But is this our boy Joe Schmo's fault? No, because the original developer should have followed the second law of writing minimalist code, which is to make variables and functions private or protected whenever possible. This minimizes accessibility, which in return reduces the code's exposed surface area. Let's consider an example where we take some immutable data from some source and create what is essentially a processing pipeline to process that data. We'll create a variable for the resulting process data that's scoped to the main function. We'll then pass references to that variable to the two processing functions. So far, so good, right? But hold up, Joe Schmo is back, but this time he adds some logic that causes unintended side effects to the process data that aren't intended to be part of the pipeline. Since the processed variable's lifetime is the runtime of the entire main function, there are plenty of opportunities for Joe Schmoes to come along and introduce unintended side effects. Not to mention, there's even the potential for some race conditions to pop up if concurrency is introduced. This is why we should follow the third law. Minimize the lifetime of variables by minimizing their scope whenever possible. That is, we can narrow the scope of the processed var to individual function calls by passing it by value. Now, we're passing copies of the original processed variable to the process functions. Finally, for the result, we just return the resulting value, which is then passed to the next process in the pipeline. The chance for side effects in race conditions and the level of debugging complexity increases as variable scope increases. So it's best to minimize variable scope whenever possible. And that's going to be it for this video. If you found this information helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.